Hey, good morning everyone, it's Tractor Man 44. We're going to uh, put that brand new cane hook uh, handle to use today. Uh, my son-in-law just made that in the last video uh, on his Pyromatic lathe, but we've got to assemble it and um, do all the checking and testing, but before we do that, there's just a little bit of painting that's got to be done, so let's take a look. There, I got the threads dressed up a little bit. I'll slide that old carriage bolt in, put us a flat washer on, now, a standard wrench for a square nut is bigger than a standard wrench for a hex. A 3 8 standard wrench is 9 16 A 3 8 square head is 5 8 Now, the reason I used those uh, square nuts was uh, simply because I was trying to maintain a degree of authenticity because it's exactly what this old thing had on it whenever, uh, whenever you know, I got it. Uh, these particular ones here came out of my grandfather's blacksmith shop years and years ago. Now, for those of you that don't know, these squared nuts here, the old timers called them taps. Uh, they have a top and a bottom. The bottom that goes up against the, the steel material is perfectly flat, and the top of them, or the outside of them, right at the four corners, are actually rounded off a little bit. Uh, if you put this on upside down with the rounded corners down, it will back off in no uncertain terms. Uh, and what I did, the, uh, the washers, because this is on a contour, the washers were sticking out straight, so I took a punch and a ball peen, and I set the washers down around the wood to where it'll fit the contour. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut these threads off here a little bit, kind of shape them up a little bit, peen them over, and make sure that these don't want to back out. Now what we're doing when, the, uh, when we peen these over, two things. First off, we're mushrooming the head to make sure the threads can't unthread and come over the top of it without a tremendous amount of force. And then secondly, believe it or not, if you look at those threads as those as a certain or a distance between the tops of the threads, by peening this down like that, I'm mushrooming the heads and I'm also scrunching down the, uh, the pitch of the threads to where that's a second safety to keep from the nut backing off with everyday use. So we're good to go. Well, I hate to see all that dirt and everything on it, you know, but uh, believe it or not, this is probably the best day of its life from here on out. Because um, once I get the end on this, get that end fitted in here, uh, it's going to go back to living a hard life. I guarantee. Teeth. I'm going to go ahead and build up the teeth on that paw that goes on the end of this and then uh, kind of build it up with the welder and then kind of grind it down a little bit and shape them and get them to where there's a, a little bit of a dig into the into a log uh, because these are definitely worn uh, they're worn down to a nubbin uh, if you can see right here they're pretty much worn down to a nubbin you can see this side here is broken plumb off there's very little sharpness to them so I'm gonna fix that right there and then we will fit this right on there I think he's got the taper just exactly right so I, I built this up I welded it up with a MIG welder and I'm just going ahead and shaping this a little bit right now Getting a bit of a shape. I'm going to clean this down to where it's a little more of a sharper point. Not so sharp or uh, that it'll be brittle and want to snap off, but uh, enough to where it'll dig in. So I got to get some of those grind marks out of there. And we're going to leave all of the dents and beats and everything all authentically on the end of that instead of cutting that off nice and flush. Are they perfect? No, not at all. But are they going to dig a lot better? Yes, I think it's going to uh, hook right into the logs and I think it's going to allow me to hook into them a lot better. I built up this whole side here, that whole fourth ear. So it's not quite proportionate to the original, but it's close. So now as soon as I get this 
squarely, the pole squarely in line with this here. I'm going to see how close it'll come to driving all the way down on that existing taper. Oops. I would like to see it just that other quarter of an inch farther on. But I think it's just about where it was originally. It's very, very close. So at any rate, here it is, fellas. It's uh, completely done. I got the end on it. Just a little bit in from being flush, but that's adequate. It's fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. I've got the all authentic uh, square-headed nuts on it, you know, from my grandfather's um, blacksmith shop. And I even got and dug in some old stuff and come up with a an old authentic pan-headed real coarse threaded screw that you have to hand drive in. So uh, it's ready for the wrecking crew. And I'm proud to say I've already got some dirt and dirt and everything on it from working on it, some old oil and everything from my hand. So like I said, today's the best day of the rest of its life because it's going to be abused from here on out. And you have to admit, they're just a slight improvement over the original. We're heading to the wood pile, man. You know, guys might forget that, uh, you know, you do more than just uh, move logs or, or roll cans with a cane hook. You can uh, reach under there, stick it in there like that, and just pry the end of a log over, line it all up just perfectly straight. Uh, works really, really well. And like I said, this is the, probably the best day of the rest of its life. It's going to live a rough one from here on out. I do like that little guy, though. The little guy is by far, does 90% of what you need to do. Of course, when you're in here in this... Uh, idea what leverage will do. Okay. Yep. Oh. 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 Yeah. There you go. That's good. Hot dog. Now I couldn't do justice to the cane to a candle and the repairing of the pole and all that stuff without bragging a little bit on some of the yard sale and farm auction purchases over the years. Now you can't be around farming and around sawmilling, around logging, wood cutting, and all that stuff in general, and be in a in a community that's so prolific uh, in the ownership of chainsaws and logging equipment. You just can't be around it without collecting some of these things. I've got the very good fortune of being in an area that seems to, uh, in the past, have had an abundance of these. A lot of times, you know, you got so many city folks come to the to the farm auctions, they don't even know what what they're looking at. A lot of times, a lot of times, you know, there's country folks is transplanted into the city and they're wanting to get back to their roots and uh, they'd be looking for things like this you know but most of the time not so what you got here is a, a pretty good compliment I didn't have time to to dig all the way into the uh, the, the bowels of the abyss known as my my shed you know uh, to dig out everything but here's here's quite a quite a few of them here and all of them have something wrong with them to, to a certain extent and you can tell by the shininess, this one here is one that I use quite frequently, as well as obviously the new one that, uh, that we just put the handle in. Like I say, you know, you come across these things at a bargain, you can't say no. One thing that's really, uh, really neat, uh, every one of these hooks have different ge geometry. And every one of them is mounted just a little bit differently than, than, than the one next to it. And that all has an effect on the way it'll grab into a log and how it'll maintain that grip on the log or on the cant when you're giving it a roll. Cants are a little bit easier. Logs are uh, kind of unforgiving sometimes, especially with dead material and thicker bark. But at any rate, it is what it is, you know. Now one of the cool things, this one here is one of the last cant hook handles that my dad made for me, uh, probably back in the 80s. Uh, and it's, it's really a good one. I use it quite a lot. But this one here is my dad's favorite old, or one of his two favorite old ones that was handmade in the forge by the by my grandfather's blacksmith in the blacksmith shop. 
my older brother's got the other one. Uh, these are both made out of uh, files, hammered out of files. And then this here is just a, a strap that they hammered out on the forge and, and attached uh, to it. And then this is a, a, this is a forge made piece of pipe with worn, worn dogs, pretty badly worn uh, paws or teeth on the paw. Uh, but this was all made, my goodness, back um, when my dad was a little boy and he was born in 1909. But like I said, my brother, my older brother's got the actual favorite one, and then this is his uh, his backup. But at any rate, I'm kind of proud to have that in my uh, in my repertoire. Some of them will be will be if I can talk the son along into it, will be put into new handles and will be put to use here before too awfully long, because uh, it's only a matter of time. You know, maybe 30, 35 years, I'm going to break the handle at my favorite again. You know what I mean? So you know what? Hate to brag on my my eclectic collection of uh, cant hooks, but I did. And this is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here.